Okay, tell us about the major. We uh, we saw him in Perth in the Inner Dominion Series, was a bit unlucky not to qualify for the final, won the consolation there, then uh, went to up to Sydney recently, ran a great race in the Bohemian Crystal. Yeah, he hasn't had a lot of luck uh, last prep. Um, James Rattray drove him. We had a few driver changes, depending on availability. Uh, James was very happy with him. Uh, a little bit, a uh, little bit unlucky in that race. The Bohemian they broke the world record. Uh, he's gone to the paddock and was going to be in the paddock for two months. Right. But in speaking yesterday to um, trainer Vince Vallelonga, he's changed the plan. Uh, he was going to bring him back and set him for some races, but there wasn't much on the calendar. Mm -hmm. So I think he's coming back next week, and he's going to set him for all the Grand Circuit races. Uh, but first of all, he's going to aim, hoping to get in the Len Smith Mile, right? which he will go to Sydney in late June, en route to the uh, Sunshine Sprint in Brisbane, in Albion Park, and the Blacks of Fate, which is, uh, which is just after that. Then he will come home and he'll probably go to the Breeders' Crown. The, right, uh, the free-for-all. The yeah. free-for-all Breeders' Crown race. And then I think Vince is pencilling in maybe over to New Zealand for the New Zealand free-for-all and the New mm. Zealand Cup. And depending how he go, comes through all of that, he may go to Perth for the Inter-Dominion. So he's got a pretty high uh, expectation of him. But I think uh, with the with the break he's had and the grounding in the the Group One races, that I think in the next six months we'll find out whether he's going to be a genuine Grand Circuit performer or or not. You know, you've you've had King Crocker racing in New South Wales. He's back in South Australia now. He's going very well for Justin Bruin. Yeah, uh, he was with Justin before he went up to Bruce Hartley's, mm -hmm. um, and Justin and Bruce have done a fantastic job with him. I think he's a horse with a lot of potential. Um, as the owner, I suppose, you always think they've got a bit more potential than they got. Uh, but he, he potentially, I believe, will will be a very nice horse. Um, he, he went to Kapunda last week and uh, Wayne Hill, who had driven him as an early three-year-old, was, uh, was very happy with the way he performed and thought he was a lot stronger and a lot better horse. OK, now you're also on the, um, the advisory committee or the com committee for the South Australian Yearling Sale. Uh, the sale this year, which was uh, proudly sponsored by HarnessBread.com, was um, deemed a great success. What did you think of it? Uh, yes, I I, uh, I take my hat off to you, especially Gary, for getting it resurrected. I think it was an, a fantastic effort. Um, I was previously, for four years, South Australian Sales Committee when it was being conducted by the board via uh, Graham Board & Co. Um, I think the yearlings were very well presented. Um, and I think that it did show the, the public and all of those followers that there, there is a place for the, the sale in South Australia, and I'm sure that it'll grow in leaps and bounds. I know Dean Barring from um, Harness Bread has, has, is going to back it, and I know that they, uh, the subcommittee have had some preliminary meetings to make this into a very special sale with a very special race on the end of it, and I, I look forward to the 2017 sale and I think that it will be bigger and better and uh, it will give both vendors and purchasers some somewhere to have a sale and uh, I think it's very important to the industry. Wonderful. Gary, thank you for your time this morning and it's been great to catch up with you and best of luck with Major Crocker. Thanks, Gazza, and all the best and I just want to thank you and uh, Dean Barring from Harness Bread for making a site available for people to for a forum to let people know what's going on and i'm sure that uh, without them uh, we'd be a lot poorer thank you